of the sun until the going down of the very same. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Good morning to our kingdom family and to all our friends who are sharing in our worship this morning. Praise the Lord for his grace that has ushered us in to 20 22. Can you bless the Lord? So many didn't make it. But if you're here this morning, you made it. And that means you're full of purpose. And that God has something greater in the future of your life. Before I move to the ministry of the word, I want to uh, acknowledge presence of Rosalind Hood. Where are you, dear? I saw her. She is running for district court or dis district court judge. You know, I've been sharing with you that it is according to scripture the will of God in manifesting his kingdom is to have spirit filled believers leading in our world's systems. So this woman of God is born again. She loves the Lord. And I'm not campaigning for her. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, because she's born again and she loves the Lord, that, that's absolutely awesome. So we thank you for your presence with, with us this morning. And we're believing that God's going to do what God does. Amen. I'm sharing this morning the word or a continuation of the word that I shared on New Year's Eve. Found out of Acts chapter 3, verse 18, down to verse 21. And so God has fulfilled what he foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, would suffer. So repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret past sins. And return to God. Seek his purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away, blotted out, completely erased so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day. Verse 20, and that he may send to you Jesus the Christ, who has been appointed for you, whom heaven must keep until the time for the completion of of restoration of all things about which God promised through the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. You may be seated, sharing a second part of the message titled, The Time of Restoration of All Things. The Time of Restoration of of all things. We learned New Year's Eve night that restoration and restitution are synonyms in scripture. Restoration includes restitution. And we understand that restoration is the restoring of a thing back to its former condition, while restitution 
is recompense. It is the repayment of something that was lost, something taken from you or stolen from you. So the focal point this morning deals with how the word of prophecy is tied into the time of restoration. Apostle Peter says it was ushered in during ancient times by the word of the prophets. So this, this thing of restoration, it, it's all about what was prophesied. This restoration of all things has been fulfilled as they were foretold by the mouth of all the prophets. Verse 15 says, the words of the prophets agree with this. Just as it is written in scripture, the words of the prophets agree with what God has determined for your future. And uh, the, the, the fight of faith, which is the only fight the believer is called to fight, is all about the word of prophecy spoken concerning you and your generations, you and your bloodline. Every fight the kingdom of darkness wages against you is about a word of prophecy that is ready to be fulfilled in your life. Restoration has been taking place, scripture says, since ancient times. Since that time, it is being fulfilled and it has invoked warfare. The fight is not about you, I repeat, nor is it about the specific things that, you, that are happening in your life right now. The fight is over a word spoken about you that is ready to be fulfilled. It is important for you to recognize and fight for every word of prophecy concerning you because that is how God is choosing to prepare you and propel you into your future. The word of prophecy gives you the stability you need now in order to successfully move into your tomorrow, into the time of restoration and restitution. The, the prophets foretelling of the time of the restoration of all things was them giving us an early edition of future events. See, you should be expecting, there should be an expectation. Why? Because the prophets gave us a sneak preview of what's coming. So you don't focus on what's happening now or what it looks like now. You focus on that early edition of the future events of your life. In other words, you get to see from God's perspective today what's coming tomorrow. Prophecy has to do with the fact that we are dealing with God who is omniscient, all-knowing. He not only knows what is and what has been, but he has equal knowledge of what will be. The word of prophecy isn't designed to satisfy our curiosity about tomorrow or the next day, nor is it designed to fill our heads with information so we can get together and debate the details of God's plan. God's purpose for prophecy is to change our hearts and affect the way we live our lives. Prophecy has all to do with your life as it is right where you are. And this is why you shouldn't allow any and everyone to prophesy over you. In 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, 
uh, the apostle wrote, know this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will. But men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The accuracy of biblical prophecy should not surprise us because this was not human writers doing guesswork. Prophetic scripture is accurate in all of its details because God moved the authors to record what was said in eternity that would manifest in time. See, God's been planning your events. He planned your events before time was, and he planned them in eternity and declared and decreed that they would happen in time. If you don't mind, tell someone it's time for it to happen. Hallelujah. Prophecy is accurate. God describes to Jeremiah that prophecy is like hitting the nail on the head. In Jeremiah 23, 29, God says to Jeremiah, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? God's prophetic word is as, uh, is pertaining, is as pertaining uh, to fire and as effective as a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. In other words, nothing can prevent God's word from being fulfilled. Uh, the Bible contains hundreds of prophecies that have already come true, and that's because it's not based on chance, but on the eternal knowledge of God. It's what he decreed in eternity that is ready to manifest in time. Say it again. It's the time. Romans 11.33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Sometimes uh, I'm concerned and I'm nervous about things that are happening in my life and that's because I don't have all the information. God knows something about my situation that I don't know. But he spoke these things through the prophets. This, this verse describes the wisdom of God's plans for us. It, 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 it's it's a prayer of praise to God for the wisdom of his plan. Some of you need to understand that God is so wise to not permit some things to happen until now because you were not ready. You were not prepared. Although God's methods and his means are beyond our comprehension, God himself is not uninformed. He governs the universe and our lives in perfect wisdom. Prophecy is like riding uh, a spacecraft far out into the space. Ever since we launched our space program in the U.S., we've learned more about Earth because when you get that high up, you can learn new information about things like weather patterns and natural resources. That's what prophecy is like. It takes you above the limitations of time and space so you can get outside of your immediate circumstances and see things from the standpoint of a bigger picture. It allows you to see tomorrow, today, from God's perspective. It, it has to do with how God sees your future. During this time of the restoration of all things, it's imperative that you study and embrace every word of prophecy that God has spoken concerning you and your generations because it's going to empower you to operate in the spirit of enlightenment. 
which is the strategy needed to bring our even our youth into a righteous nation, our future generations into a righteous nation. All these things come from the times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Last year, as well as the year before, uh, have sort of beat up on a lot of us, but bless the Lord that we are now in the times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. You will indeed recover. Hallelujah. You will rebound. Hallelujah. And you will bounce back. See, this is how you invade with your vision, with the skill that God has given you. The, the wisdom of the due season lies in understanding that the due season always comes. Don't be weary because your due season always comes. It always comes. Why? Because it is the law of God. God's word of prophecy uh, is his law. So don't spend time worrying about whether God's word will come to pass in your life. Instead, spend time preparing for the promise. The word comes to pass because it is law. It is legal. So when God spoke in eternity regarding your future, it became a legal issuing or a legal uh, declaring and decreeing, hallelujah, the law of God and prophecy, they are legal. Meanwhile, if you're not prepared when the Lord shows up, you'll miss the promise. Focus on preparing this year. Focus on preparing yourself for the manifestation of the promise. I repeat, the word of prophecy is God's law. It's legal. Second Peter 1, 19 says, so we have the prophetic word made more certain. It goes on to say, you do well to pay close attention to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and light breaks through. The gloom and the morning star arises in your heart. The King James Version says that this word of prophecy is a sure word of prophecy. It's a sure word of prophecy because it is the mind of God, it is the will of God, it is the plan of God that was set in motion. Stop being nervous about your today. Because if you are nervous about your today, you will not know how to respond to your tomorrow. Get happy about your day right now. Get excited about right now. Get excited in this moment, in, in your today. Bless the Lord right now because you're confident that your tomorrow is going to be uh, better than your day and that this year uh, is just, it's going to be better than all the other years because God has decreed, spoken a word. Let me tell you something that uh, <laughs> the Lord's word res regarding you super exceeds what anybody else has to say. God's prophecy regarding you trumps everything else. Yes, so you don't, you, you don't concern yourself with people who are hating on you. You don't concern yourself in this year with a fight that someone pulls you into that has nothing to do with the fight of faith. The sure word of prophecy, when you focus on the promise instead of preparation for the promise, the promise will become a God. You idolize the promise. And you don't want to idolize it. You don't have to. It's the law of God. Spoken in eternity. And then he puts you in time to prepare you for it. God has been preparing us for the next level of favor and purpose 
And he's been setting us up to receive restitution, payback. The enemy has to give back everything he took, everything he stole. And even if you lost it on your own, God says, I am sending restitution. I'm going to repay you uh, uh, concerning the losses of your life. Some of us, we didn't lose loved ones, but they transitioned and because we're left here without them, it leaves a pain. But in this season, expect God to soothe the pain of your heart. You can't bring them back, but you can celebrate the fact that God connected you with them. And though they are now in heaven and you're still in the earth, they left something in you through the relationship that you shared with them. We all have had the unfortunate experience of family members, people we love, being taken by COVID-19. But bless the Lord, when you're in Christ, you don't die. You start a brand new life. Absence from the body is presence with the Lord. It's present with the Lord. So, so God's been preparing you. Yes, you've seen things <clears throat> being stripped from you, but, but you're getting those things back. When God put Adam in the garden, he blessed him. He blessed him to be fruitful and to multiply, to have dominion, kingship. All through the centuries, God has been restoring the church back to the way it was from the beginning. As it was at the beginning, so shall it be in the end. We are in a great time of transition right now. And the Bible says in Acts 3, 19 through 21, to repent or to change your purpose, turn around to God. So your sins may be wiped clean that times of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat, of a reviving with fresh air may come from the presence of the Lord. When you dwell in the holy place, in the presence of the Lord, you have his protection and he, he revives you and gives you a refreshing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us have been through so much, but God is refreshing us. Am I preaching to the right people this morning? You are in the time of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. This is not a time to neglect your relationship with Holy Spirit. Because he is the witness of the word of prophecy. See, when you know what God has said and you, you dwell on those things and you meditate on those things and you align yourself because you understand that in order for these things to manifest, you must repent. That means you've got to turn from your way of seeing it and you've got to turn from your way of thinking about it You've got to turn from your perspective. You have to change your focus and your conversation. You even have to sometimes change your company, who you hang out with. You must in this season dwell among people who are not jealous but will celebrate your future and the promises of God being manifest. I often say it. I don't understand church folk who will watch you suffer and, and suffer lack and, and hardships. And then when God began to restore you, they looking at you like, you know, with this strange spirit on them as if God has done something for you that he's not going to do for them. He isn't a respecter of persons. And what you need to know is that if you see it happening for me, you need to get ready because if you are aligned with God, don't, don't assume that somebody who's 
being blessed, that they're being blessed because they're better than you. God is no respecter of persons, but he does respect his law. And so sometimes, you know, we're disqualified because in our hearts, we are in love with our egos, with our intelligence. You know, we've gone to school and, you know, that is warranted. When you take time to go and study, all of that is wonderful. But make sure that you, you put your degree beneath his presence. Oh, God will use your degree in, in an awesome way when your degree is led by his presence. See, when, when that happens, you don't have to work up anything. You don't have to impress anybody, nor do you have to compete with anyone. When you dwell in the presence of the Lord, you'll come out with his presence on your countenance, you, you'll come out, his presence will, will uh, anoint you to make the right kinds of decisions and his presence will connect you divinely with the right people at the right time. And so the writer says <clears throat> that during the time of the restoration of all things that God would also add restitution. Now, this is the thing. As soon as the prophets of God begin to prophesy over your life, declaring, thus saith the Lord, the fight is on. The enemy is out to destroy you before your word comes to pass, and your word is being challenged. Is there anybody here who knows that God's word of prophecy spoken concerning you and your household is being challenged? Between your word and the manifestation, you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. It's about your faith. The enemy don't want you to have a faith that thrusts you into God's will for your life. So you have got to go through the fire. I came to help somebody this morning. I came to tell you that the devil that is fighting your word has enough power to challenge your word, but he doesn't have enough power to change your word. He can challenge your word, but he can't change what God decreed over you. That's good news. Your word of prophecy is what pushes you and carries you. Your word of prophecy will get you through. If he can get you focused, the enemy on the problems, on the trials, on the struggles. It keeps you so beat down that you can't even pray. You can't fast. You don't even want to come to church because the enemy knows if you ever repent and turn back to God's way and purpose for your life, get in his presence that you will recover all, not some, all. You will recover from the heat and he will send a refreshing Hallelujah. But God gave us a promise that when these things begin to happen, when the church turns back to God, that the refreshing was coming and every word spoken by the prophets is coming to pass. When you catch the thief, he's got to repay you seven times what he took. The three Hebrew boys who were thrown into the fiery furnace, the, the fire, and were left for dead. There was no way that they were going to escape. They are put into the furnace, and the furnace was turned up at its highest degree. For some of you, it can't get any harder than what it already is. The enemy had sealed, he thought, their doom. But when he came back later and looked in, he said, I know I, I threw three in there. But there's a fourth one. You never have to worry about the heat of the furnace when you've got God's presence in there with you. You know, fire 
that's connected to fire is nothing more than more fire. So when the king saw God in the fire with these boys, what he didn't understand is that our God is a consuming fire. So fire got in the furnace of fire. You know, when you got fire that is representing God, then natural heat does not dominate that. Touch somebody and tell me, I know how to deal with fiery furnaces. I invite the presence of God into every fire I find myself in. The Hebrew boys had a word and a promise that their God would deliver them. But just because God is the healer, the deliverer, the miracle worker, doesn't mean you won't go through the fire. Hear me, church. Just because you are in the heat right now doesn't mean God has forsaken you or doesn't care. He has just been getting you prepared for it. You couldn't have handled it a year ago, nor even six months ago. But now you've been seen by God. You got his attention, and the floodgates are about to open. And the Bible says that God remembered. But the confession of these Hebrew boys to the king was, our God is able. How many of you know he is able? But then they attached to their response to the king this, but if he doesn't deliver, if he doesn't deliver, mm -hmm, if we're not able to escape this situation, we know if he doesn't deliver that he's able. When you lose sight on God's ability, you are truly in trouble. But when you know he can do it, even if he doesn't do it, your spirit is settled. Your heart has contentment. And although you're in the fire and, it, and the fire is turned up as hot as it can be, you need to understand that there's a glory of God on your life to endure that dimension of the fire. There's a glory on, the, on your life. There's a presence of God that, that sustains you while you are in the fire. Let me hurry on. The Bible said that God remembered these boys and he remembered them right in the middle of their fire, their greatest battle, the most uh, horrible storm they were in. God remembered them and brought them out. And after the, after the heat was over, they received a promotion. God blessed them. Come on, somebody. God is remembering you right now. He's remembering the word he spoke concerning you. And he, he, he wants you to know that restitution, payday, is here. Always after the fire, there is advancement in God. Some of you shout when God tells you great promotion is coming. Next level is headed your way. But you cry when you get in the fight or in the fire. You start throwing fits like God left you and, and you can't figure out why all this is happening and you forget about the word of prophecy that God spoke. Jesus told his disciples, he said, tarry in the upper room until they be endued with power. Everybody likes power. But what those, uh, <clears throat> those folks uh, in the upper room, what they uh, had not understood is that uh, they were, if they were going to get this power, they had to gather together in the upper room. They were not told <clears throat> that they were going to have to stay in the same room with the same people until it came to pass. You have got to get your focus off who is in the fire with you. Because at that point, 
you know, it's not that you don't want them to come out of the fire, but it's imperative to you that you get out of the fire. You can't get out of the fire with unforgiveness in your heart. You cannot get out of the fire when there is malice. God will keep you in the fire until the fire consumes your soulish realm. It consumes your flesh. It changes your heart because the heart is desperately wicked. You sometimes have to stay in the same place with people who are not pleasant to be around. They were going to have to get along. Church, if we're going to receive restoration, and restitution, God is not wanting to do this for a few of us. He wants this for the ecclesia, the body of Christ. So you've got to learn to get along. They were in the upper room, and they were going to have to fight for the promise. They were going to have to tarry until the promise came. I, I don't know about you, but if God would have told me about the fire I was going to go through to get the promise or the demons I was going to have to fight or the tears I was going to have to cry or the pain and the heartache I was going to have to experience to obtain the prophecy spoken over me, I would have run and would still be running. But the Bible says that cloven tongues as a fire. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit anointed their tongue and they started speaking in other languages. Sometimes you got to speak to things from your, from your spirit, from your spirit language. Sometimes you got to go, and that didn't, that didn't make any sense to my reason or my natural mind. But I'm not speaking from my mind's perspective. I'm speaking out of the spirit that flows from my belly. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. The, the fire set upon each of them, and they begin to speak with other tongues. You got to get another tongue made. You got to stop all this confessing and saying things that don't line up with Bible. The power of the Holy Ghost needs to fall on your tongue so that it manifests through your speech, your conversation. Mm. Sometimes I run into believers and I'm thinking, wow, doesn't matter what I tell them that's in Scripture, they're coming back with some rebuttal. But I don't know anything but Scripture. How, 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 how do we worship too long? Please explain that to me. How is a sermon too long for you? With all the issues you have. The reason sometimes I have to preach as long as I do is because you've been so long in your predicament and it takes time for that word to get in your heart. Sometimes people can hear, but they're not really receiving and there is no manifestation. How many of you know that in this season you must have manifestation? You've got to have the fulfillment of some things. Somebody shout fire. The Bible said the fire set upon each of them and they began to speak with other tongues. But, but he gave you the Holy Ghost to give you power. Somebody think that, you know, you just trying to be better. No. It's not a matter of trying to be better. It's a matter of being everything maximum. He created you to be. See, when you live on the level God wants you to live on, it exposes folk who are not living on the level that he spoke concerning them. The fire, how many of you know that fire purifies, it cleanses, challenges, it, it uh, elevates, it promotes. And, and God says, after the heat, the refreshing is coming. And the Bible said that, as it relates to Joseph, that 
Joseph was favored by his father. You know the story. His father made him a coat of many colors. He was favored by man. And it made him stick out. He stuck out from the crowd, from his brothers. He was chosen. And as soon as his favor was recognized, the enemy was out to get him. And many of you, your favor has been recognized and the fight is on. And I can hear Joseph saying, man, all this because I'm favored, because God spoke over me. I have to, I have to deal with the prison, the pit. I, I don't have any friends. My family isn't here. They've forsaken. I'm hurt. I'm abandoned. I'm confused. I'm in a whirlwind. I'm in a storm. I've got this battle, this trial, this fire. I don't even have the one thing, they, uh, the one thing uh, that I treasured. And that's my cult. But the favor wasn't on Joseph's cult. Sometimes what cover you, people misinterpret. They get concerned with how nicely you're dressed. But you have to tell folks the anointing ain't in the dress. It's in me, the person. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, the, the favor was not on Joseph's coat. The favor was on Joseph. I want to prophesy this morning and tell you they may take your house, they may take your car, friends may walk away, family may leave you, but they will never take your favor. The enemy cannot take your promise from you. He will not take the word of prophecy that God has given you. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So go ahead, devil, send the fire, make it seven times hotter, but that will not stop my word from coming to pass. God promised refreshing after the fire, and God promised that all the words that have been spoken out of the mouths of the prophets are getting ready to come to pass during this time of restoration and restitution. If he said your children will be saved, it's about to happen. If he said your body is healed, it's about to happen. If he said you are the head and not the tail, it's about to happen. If he said you are blessed and not cursed, it's about to happen. Somebody shout, it's time for restitution. I, I, I sense the prophet rising up in me. Now, now listen to this. And the Bible says that Peter was cleaning his nets. And Jesus walked by and gave him a word and said to Simon Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. After <clears throat> he let Jesus know how he spent the night. He said, and he's a fisherman. A professional fishing. He knows the spot. He knows how to hook what he wants to catch. But he's been at it all night. He's been toiling all night. I mean, when, you, when you're, you know, when, when you're trying to come up out of what you're in, and it just doesn't seem to be working, it'll kill your faith. Yes. And so Peter said, Lord, we've been out here all night long, and we ain't caught nothing. You know, it's not good when you've been at something a long time, and nothing good has been produced out of it. What that tells you is that maybe <laughs> you need to change something. <laughs> Peter said, we've been out here all night, but nevertheless, somebody holler and, and, and say, nevertheless, been at it for a while. 
been praying for a while, waiting for some while, but nevertheless at your word, I will let down the net. But wait a minute. Jesus told him to let down your nets, plural, and he let down his net, singular. And the Bible says uh, the abundance he wasn't ready for because it broke his net. If God says, <laughs> launch out into the deep and let down your nets, that means that the catch is going to be abundant. You going out there with a pole and God says get a net and get another net hmm? and let down your nets. Somebody holler, this is the season of abundance. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. This is the season where you've got to let down Regardless of what didn't work before, regardless of what hasn't happened yet, let down your nets because God's going to fill them with abundance. You can tell that he wasn't prepared for the abundance that God wanted him, wanted him to have. God gave him a word, let down your nets. And he let down a net. And it broke. God said all this hail, all this fire, all this toiling and praying has been preparing you for this time of restitution. God has the biggest abundance coming to those who believe and obey. God knows what he's saying when he speaks it. Come on, somebody. Shout, it's my time for restitution. Shout, it's my time for restoration. It's my time for a supernatural turnaround. It's my time for healing. It's my time, hallelujah, to have the joy of the Lord. This my time to be the head, not the tail. This is my time to stand upon my high place. This is my time of restoration and restitution, and you need to get excited about it. Arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord. Touch somebody and tell me, I have been in the fire. But after the fire, there's glory. After this, there will be glory. The presence of the Lord is just going to sit on you. And sit on you. And continue to sit on you until it hatches the word of prophecy over your life. All you have to do is have faith to believe that he who promised is able to fulfill his word. He said himself, not one word that have come from my mouth that I have spoken can return to me unfulfilled. He said, my word can't come back before there's a manifestation. My word, I sent it forth out of my mouth to bless you, to anoint you, to establish you, and to raise you to another dimension. And that word that came forth out of my mouth cannot return unfulfilled. What that means, it's a done deal regardless of what's happening in my circumstances. It's, it's, it's done. It's, the, it's done. The kingdom of heaven can do whatever it plans to do, but it cannot, it will not trump God's plan for my life. My, God's plan for your life can be trumped. Now you can delay it, but you can't trump it. Hallelujah. 
You, you may delay it. And some of us have been responsible for, or have to be responsible for some things that are happening. But God is just so full of grace that he'll give you grace to make a mess. Somebody give God praise for the grace that he's given you to do your own thing. And it didn't reap you a good harvest. But when God gets ready, when the time of restoration comes, God will forgive you of past mistakes. Do not enter into this year with guilt and condemnation about what you didn't get right before now. Bless the Lord. When, when you made the decision and it went wrong, all God was doing was giving you an opportunity to eliminate what doesn't work. So you need to give God praise. You did some stuff, but it, de it didn't work. Praise God, you survived it. Praise the Lord. And, and God allowed you the process Process of elimination but you're wiser now oh my god you're better now you're stronger now you are now experiencing a refreshing from the presence of the Lord yes you were in the grave and you were already buried but like Lazarus the Holy Spirit came to your grave and told you get up from where you are will you tell somebody get up from where you are from that negative attitude get up from that place of despair get up from that place of depression and that place of oppression get up arise people of God and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you lift those hands and give him praise hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. It's your time to be blessed. It's your time to be elevated. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. Lay your hands on your belly and decree out of my belly will flow every promise, every manifestation, every decree, every declaration that God decreed over my life. This is my time and they will flow out of my belly and will come forth from my mouth. I will speak the word of the Lord over every situation and to every circumstance and I will see the manifest glory of the Lord. You got to rise up and take it by force. You got to fight for the word of, of prophecy over your life. You sat long enough in that place of despair. You sat long enough crying and weeping and feeling pitiful for yourself. Now you got to get up and fight since the time of John the Baptist the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence take it by force I will not waste the fight on things and people that the fight isn't even about the fight is about my faith the fight is about your faith the fight is about your faith and the word of prophecy so you gotta really believe because this is the truth. Even your faith. Lift those hands and honor the Lord. <laughs> All over this auditorium, hallelujah. The time of restitution of all God is perfecting everything concerning you. He knows what's on your heart. Your children, your grandchildren. David testified, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor nor his seed begging bread. That means restoration is coming to everybody in your bloodline.
your children will not be homeless because the blessing that is upon your life is upon them. They may not know it. At this point, it doesn't matter that they don't know it, but it's very important that you know it and that you worship God on the level that is equivalent to what you know, not what you feel. Worship the Lord on the level of your knowledge of who God is and his ability to bring to pass his promises in your life. Hallelujah. I am finished. Can you praise God? Elder Kathy, dear, if you will come and give the invitation, hallelujah, go on and bless the Lord while she comes.